Hello, everybody. I'm Brian, and we're here for a special edition of Amy News and Conversation. We're here in beautiful Long Beach, California. Uh, this is Amy Exchange 2023, and uh, this is day two. And I'm here with uh, Nooper, and we're going to talk about uh, you just won a, or you and your committee won a Standards Development Award. So can you introduce yourself and uh, what, what group was this that won this award? Yeah, thank you so much, Brian. My name is Nooper. I'm part of Intuitive. I'm a director there of reprocessing and sterility assurance. Very honored to receive this award. Uh, the Working Group 93, ST Working Group 93, awesome. recently released ST 98, the cleaning standard. And for that work, we got recognized as the Technical Committee Award this year at Amy Exchange. I, I should point out for anyone who doesn't know, but ST 98 was very big news. You know, I'm our uh, digital news editor at Amy. and the amount of press attention that it got, people reading about it, like this was a very, very big deal. Why? <laughs> what, what makes it unique? Yeah, thank you so much for asking. You know, ST98 is the first cleaning validation for medical devices. So for decades, Amy, at Amy, we've had wonderful sterilization standards, even at the ISO level. Mm -hmm. But the very first step to making sure a medical device is ready for patient use is cleaning. Without a clean device, you cannot have a sterile device. So we had this gap for no cleaning validation standards out there. ST91 was the, ST98 was the very first one that came out saying, here's how you perform a cleaning validation. So that's why it's finally released. It took eight years to release. And that's why it's such a big deal. And when we talk about validation, we're talking about basically showcasing that this process, whatever it is, methodology wise, makes something truly clean. And then if we were talking about sterilization, this other process makes something truly sterile. That's exactly right. Yeah. We're laying out how do you actually do, first of all, what is the process you use to clean a device? And then how do you ensure that that process will actually clean the device? So what are the endpoints? What are the controls you need to place? What's the simulated surgical use you may have to implement? You know, what's the sample size or um, what sort of test methodology would you have to put in place to make that happen? Can you give us, for those who might not know, uh, an example of what uh, an action that is cleaning is versus an action that would be sterilization? Yeah, great question, right? Uh, washer disinfectors, right? You see a bunch of those manufacturers actually on the floor here today. Um, they perform cleaning using spray arms or flushing on our products, on medical device manufacturer products. Those are cleaning steps. When we talk about sterilization, we're really talking about steam sterilization or using some sort of gas, for example, steam in that case, or hydrogen peroxide to kill all sorts of microbes. That's or your radiation. sterilization. Or radiation, yeah. right? Yeah, for single-use devices, they use, a lot of them use EO or radiation. For reusable devices, most commonly they use steam and VHP, vaporized hydrogen peroxide. And, and you know, for our, our viewers, they're probably going, wow, even Nupur knows a lot about this because <laughs> it, like you said, there's, there's years and years and years of standards about that. That's right. But not cleaning. Not cleaning until now, which right. is why we're really proud of the work ST Working Group 93 did here. D can you tell me a little bit about the past of, of, of why ST98 was, was necessary in the first place? Why do we need a standard for cleaning? Yeah, exactly. You know, in the past, we had TIR30. It was a compendium of all the literature out there for cleaning. This is a technical information, information report. Done. Exactly. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, TIR 30. And that didn't really lay out the requirements per se. And so about eight years ago, when the working group came together, they said we could either revise this document or we could create a standard ST to say, here's laying out all the requirements. And so the working group decided to do a standard and instead obsolete TIR 30. So a standard that would replace TIR 30. Right, yeah. So we did a new working, new work item proposal, NWIP, to say we're going to create a new standard for cleaning. And that got submitted and got approved by the Amy Standards Board. Once that was approved, our work really began to create the standard SD98. Now, is there any points in that work that you're particularly proud of or were there, or were there major pain points? I mean, I'm, the standards development process is tough. Oh, to yes. Begin with. <laughs> this is a brand new document. A brand new document. Yeah. Revising a document itself is a lot of work. Creating a new one definitely is like starting from scratch here. 
So once with the NWIP, New Work Item Proposal, got approved, mm. we then created a draft, the very first draft. And that was my six-hour flight from D.C. to San Francisco. <laughs> what? Oh, goodness. So that was the first draft, five pages long. And we said, yes, we have our first working draft. Yeah. And that working draft got circulated to the, work, the working group. We had over 500 comments to that five-page document. And that was working draft dash two. We had five revisions to that. And then we finally said, yes, it's good enough. Let's make it now a committee draft. And as a committee draft, it went through three revisions, which is also unusual. Um, usually you have one or two CDs. Mm -hmm. But for a new standard, and one where there was a lot of people who were very passionate about it. We had about 200 working group members. Yeah. Um, a third draft made sense. We decided, yes, let's do the right thing and make sure we have a third draft with lots of comments addressed and go into our final draft. Now, that entire process took about eight years to complete. And reaching consensus to your question, second part of the question, it was difficult at times. You know, Steve yeah. and I were the co-chairs. And really, we made sure one Everyone, every single member got heard. You know, everyone was representing different types of products. We had beds all the way to minimally lap instruments. Mm -hmm. So we said, okay, what does, how do we make sure everyone is heard and listened to so that we can have a very fulfilling discussion? Number two, how do we make sure everyone's focused on the scope of the problem we're fixing? Yeah. A lot of times we would try to, delve into a problem that sounded very interesting and very intriguing. And then we, Steve and I would have to say, nope, nope great to problem. Yes, yeah. but not part of the scope of this working group. Let's give that to our sister working group, which is SD Working Group 12, you know, or maybe that really belongs in Working Group 91, which is working on, you know, flexible endoscopes. So really keeping everyone focused on the scope, like what are we really trying to solve was important. And then through all those discussions, which sometimes took two years and sometimes took only four hours, once a consensus is reached, we've reached it. You know, there's no coming back to no, it no. three years ago from now, you know. <laughs> so I think those were the three things that really helped us make sure we were making progress. And once reaching consensus, you know, as we were going around. Yeah. Um, I one of the really impressive things about this, the, any standards process is, is that, you know, you're trying to stay up to date on, you know, the, the, the latest best practices, the latest science, which involves a lot of different perspectives. You said 200 group members. That's a lot of people. <laughs> uh, can you give me an idea of what kind of people, what were they representing there? Yeah, we had three major groups that were represented. One was the user group, so from healthcare facilities. Mm -hmm. The other was regulatory, made up of the FDA. And the large group was medical device manufacturers. Oh, no. Because this was a standard that was going to affect requirements that medical device manufacturers had to fulfill, it made sense to have a lot of representation for medical device manufacturers. Mm. Then that would tell me, so your main, uh, I guess, audience for this standard, these guidelines, is the medical device manufacturers? That is right, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what... What are you trying to see as a success for the adoption of this standard? What, what, what will that result in? Yeah, that's such a great question. It's, it's such, a, such a passion of mine, right? The, the main reason we now have a cleaning standard is to ensure patient safety. Huh. You know, we've all been through the last eight years of like hearing about flexible endoscopes causing infections or hearing about HAIs and, you know, always popping up in the news. Now we have a clear, concise, and consensus way of performing cleaning validations. And every medical device manufacturer knows exactly how to do it. They can pick up this document and they can do it. When a new standard comes out, for example, SD98, the FDA has three choices. They can either choose not to recognize it, they can choose to partially recognize it, or they can choose to fully recognize it. With this standard, FDA chose to fully recognize it. Me too. And yeah, so we're really excited. Even they believe this will help with patient safety. And that's what I'm most excited about with SD98. Well, congratulations. It was <laughs> clearly a lot of hard work. And it obviously is resulting in something that uh, is going to have a big impact on the industry. So we're excited to see what comes next. Um, but what is next for the working group itself? Or is there any big other projects that you want to bring attention to? Yeah, you know, so... I want to make sure we thank two groups. One is definitely the members for all their hard work, okay. creating the first cleaning standards is a lot of work. So that was 
And the second one is definitely Amy. You know, the last few years of this center development were done during the pandemic. Even then, we did not miss a single meeting. No kidding. Thanks to Amy. So I really want to thank those two groups there. But what is next, right? Where are we going next? We now have a U.S. S Amy ST98. We have a cleaning standard that's applicable for the U.S. Right. A lot of medical device manufacturers are global. So we really want to take the standard to an ISO level and say, can we get consensus and agreement at an ISO level saying this is how we're going to perform clean validations, regardless of whether you're in Europe or U.S. or Asia? Yeah. Well, you know, Amy has a lot of uh, uh, technical advisory groups that are then speaking on the ISO level, kind of helping influence uh, ISO standards. So it sounds like that's the next step for you. That's correct. Right. Yes. Okay. Is there a call to action? Do you want more people to be joining uh, the groups right now? We right now, I, yes. If you, are, <laughs> if you are an SME, it is never too late or too early to participate in standards development, not just SD98, but any standards development. Sorry, SME being subject matter expert. Right, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know. Yeah. So, Although, granted, if you are an SME, you probably know what it is. Yeah. True, good point. So, you know, if you are an SME, get involved. It will help understand why a standard is written a certain way. Mm -hmm. more, and more important, it will make that standard better. And the best way to get involved is through the Amy Standards Committee groups. Well, Newper, uh, thank you again for uh, being here today to talk about this. Congratulations on the thank award. You. Congratulations on the standard. I feel like that's the bigger accomplishment <laughs> here. And uh, enjoy the rest of exchange. This has been great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian.